algebraic tomography is all about a system of equations, which we'll name w times v equals p. Now in this formula, v is a one-dimensional vector of n elements, each representing a voxel value of a certain 2D or 3D volume. p is a one-dimensional vector of m elements, each representing a measurement taken at a certain detector in a certain projection direction. W is an m times n matrix, which we refer to by projection matrix. And it basically links a certain volume geometry to a certain projection geometry. Now each row of this projection matrix corresponds to a certain ray that goes through the volume to a certain detector cell. And each column of this projection matrix corresponds to a certain voxel in the volume. Now each element wij then effectively represents how much voxel j contributes to the measurement i. And in a few moments we'll discuss this more in depth, but first let us take a closer look at some of the properties of this projection matrix. For example, what happens when we multiply this matrix with a certain vector? Visually it would look something like this. If we then single out a certain point of the resulting vector, we get a linear combination of all voxels, weighted with how much they contribute. Note here that the projection matrix is in fact very sparse, and most weights will thus be zero. Now the result of this linear combination is effectively a simulation of what we would measure on the detector if the object represented by the volume V were to be in the scanner. And then if we compute this for each detector, which means doing the full matrix multiplication, we get the full sinogram of our volume. Now this operation we call the forward projection, and is a crucial one in all algebraic reconstruction methods. Now of equal importance is the multiplication of the transpose of the projection matrix. And the result of this operation at a certain voxel is a linear combination of all measurements linked to that voxel. And if we look at all the points in the sinogram that are linked to a certain voxel, we get a line that follows a sine wave-like curve, which is by the way where the term sinogram comes from. If we then compute this multiplication for all the voxels, we get what we call a back projection, as you can see in this image here. Let us now have a closer look at how the values of the projection matrix are defined. These values are also called projection weights. Now there is no definitive answer for this, as multiple projection kernels are valid. Each comes with its own trade-off in accuracy versus efficiency to compute. Here we'll present three types, all of which can be found in the Astro toolbox. In the first option, the projection weight is defined by the length that the ray i traverses through the voxel j, and we call this the line projection kernel. This is a reasonably accurate and reasonably efficient method. A second option is Joseph's kernel. What happens here is that for each row or each column, we find the two voxels closest to the intersection of the ray and that row or column. And then the projection weights of both voxels are found by linear interpolation. This method provides the most efficient implementation, but is a bit less accurate. Although I have to say that in practice the difference is barely noticeable. One final projection method is to regard the X-ray beam not as a single line, but as a strip with the width of a certain detector cell. Each projection weight is then the area of intersection between the voxel and this strip. Of all the kernels depicted here, this concept clearly corresponds the most to the actual X-ray beams in the scanner, and thus provides the most accurate model. The cost of this advantage, however, is a significant decrease in time needed for each projection, so in practice this model is rarely used. 